name is Sylvia Ruiz. I'm with the organization called Let America Vote. It's the organization that Jason Kander founded in February of 2017. Um, you know, I was the director of Hispanic paid media for the Hillary Clinton campaign before I went over to work at Let America Vote after the election. And I just remember one of the things uh, that Trump said when he was uh, first uh, running was this big attack on Mexican immigrants, right? Like they're criminals, rapists, etc. So as a Latina living here in the United States, a naturalized citizen, I knew that the 2016 election was going to be about a fear election and really demonizing um, people like me and communities of color and trying to keep us from voting and exercising our ability to participate. And so you look at some articles that have come out in the last several days around what the Trump's strategy was to really depress the vote of minority communities, African Americans, Latinos, et cetera. It just really highlights the importance of us communicating to all communities that they have the right to participate, that, uh, that they should exercise their right to vote, uh, and that this administration is going to do everything they can to prevent people from voting. If they can't win on their ideals and values, they're going to try to change the game and rig the system so people can't participate. And we've seen this as a Republican playbook over the last several decades of requiring people to have voter ID, photo voter ID, trying to prevent people um, from voting. Um, if you're a student, you have to prove your domicile. Uh, if you're a working person that can't easily have access to go vote um, and your state doesn't have absentee ballots um, that are no excuse or vote at home proposals, you may not be able to vote that day. If you have two jobs and the first, uh, you have to be in at work at six o'clock and your second job doesn't get you out until after the polls close, you have no opportunity to participate. So these voter suppre suppression efforts across the country that have really been a playbook by Republicans um, to keep people like me, people like uh, you in this room, uh, your uh, college age students from participating uh, is gonna be really key for this election in 2018 and 2020. So Jason founded uh, Let America Vote in um, uh, 2017 because he heard Donald Trump say that there were three to five million illegal votes that were cast in the 2016 election. And I know he said that because Californians <laughs> vote, three million more Californian voters voted for Hillary Clinton than for Trump. So that really like bugged him, right? Like I didn't actually win the popular vote. Um, and so he did everything he could in the first couple of months of his administration to undermine our belief in uh, our democracy. And he started the Trump, uh, sham Trump uh, Voter Fraud Commission with Chris Kobach, who's the Secretary of State of Kansas, that has made a career of vilifying immigrants and from keeping um, people from voting. And uh, they tried to get people to believe that there was large election fraud, they tried to get a lot of state secretaries of state to turn over voter data so that they could prove that there was large voter fraud. Uh, one of the commissioners on that sham voting commission um, was from New Hampshire, uh, uh, Mr. Gardner. Uh, they just conducted a thorough review in New Hampshire of any potential election fraud that happened. Um, and Trump had said there were buses coming in from Massachusetts and Vermont and everywhere else uh, to try to, you know, flip the vote in New Hampshire. And, and they blamed the fact that uh, Ayat did not win in New Hampshire and that Hillary Clinton won uh, New Hampshire in 2016 on the fact that all these buses of out-of-state residents were coming into New Hampshire to vote. Um, that was found to be false. They have found less than 40 people uh, that potentially voted uh, in two places out of uh, the initial number that was like something like 90,000. There were a lot of buses coming from out of state, but it was volunteers <laughs> coming into New Hampshire uh, from Massachusetts, from other states, busing people from New Hampshire to their polling places in New Hampshire. Uh, so what New Hampshire did uh, to try to prevent all these uh, illegal voters from voting uh, was that they started proposing student um, uh, 
uh, restrictions um, on voting, uh, requiring students to prove that they had intent to reside and domicile in New Hampshire. And you had to sign, you know, with penalty of perjury that you actually are residing in New Hampshire. Additionally, uh, uh, an official could come to your house, knock on your door afterwards, and confirm that that's where you live. How many people would be willing to sign up to register to vote if you knew someone could come and check in on you, right? It's sacred that your ability to vote is, is secret, that you should be able to exercise your right without a lot of government interference. And so all of these tactics are meant to keep people of color, working families, students, the elderly from voting. And so what we're doing at Let America Vote is we have a boots on the ground campaign uh, in any state that has had recent history of voter suppression um, or has an opportunity to expand voting rights. In 2017, uh, we were in Virginia uh, in New Hampshire. In Virginia, we were able to flip seven seats um, uh, to Republican, uh, from Republicans to Democrats. Um, and we almost took the delegate um, in Virginia just by one vote, actually, actually literally one vote, kept it from being uh, uh, Democratic controlled for the first time. And we helped elect uh, Ralph Northam. And one of the first proposals that the new Democratic delegates um, proposed as a block was a group of reforms on voting rights, that we should be making it easier for people to vote. And so we believe that we are creating political consequences for uh, those that want to uh, suppress the vote. Just like, uh, you know, t-shirts and campaigns that have talked about, I'm a healthcare voter, I'm an immigrant voter, I, you know, this is my agenda and this is what I'm gonna be fighting for. Uh, we want to make sure that there is a political discussion and a public argument around voting rights and that if Republicans want to continue to suppress the vote, that we're going to hold them politically accountable. And so in 2018, we have a boots on the ground operation in five states um, that have recent history of uh, voter suppression, New Hampshire. Um, in Iowa, they, they introduced a really restrictive voter ID bill. In Georgia, uh, we're working to elect Stacey Abrams, uh, a voting rights champion that has fought hard to register uh, communities of color uh, to vote and working families to vote, and that has a recent history of purging more than 500,000 voters from the polls um, and keeping, uh, trying to keep people from um, participating by cutting early voting hours or trying to cut back times that people can vote. Uh, we're also in Tennessee that has the lowest voter participation rate of any state. So there, they already had restrictive voter ID bills and laws on the books, but we just want to increase the participation in Tennessee. And in Nevada, uh, we are participating there because Republicans tried to recall these Democrats uh, who had a really progressive agenda. And there is a ballot initiative in Nevada, um, automatic voter registration that's gonna make it easier for a lot of people to vote. So we wanna not just fight back against vote suppressors, we wanna be supporting initiatives where uh, people can actually uh, uh, expand voting rights and that's our opportunity in Nevada. So we're always looking for opportunities in states to elect uh, local state legislatures or secretaries of state or governors that are gonna fight for voting rights. Um, because voting really is a mix of federal and state, you know, laws. Where we can have the most impact is on flipping or uh, taking over some state houses and strengthening voting rights in the states so that these proliferation of really restrictive bills don't move into other states. Maybe Republicans will think twice about uh, moving forward voter ID bills or other voter suppression tactics if they see that there is an energy energized group of people that's fighting against what they're doing, not just through the courts, not that are now controlled by Jeff Sessions and, uh, uh, you know, very conservative administration and, and the courts, uh, not just by advocacy for or against bills, but that we're going to take you out if you uh, are trying to suppress the vote and we're going to elect people that actually have a pro-voting rights agenda. Um, so we're in those five states. Um, just like Steve said, we know that uh, 
voter registration is key and one of the voting blocks that needs to participate a lot more um, in midterm elections specifically is young people and youth vote. Um, so we have a new initiative called capdownvote.org, capdownvote.org, um, and it's really empowering high school students to register their fellow high school students. Um, and so, you know, we just launched it right now in May. Oh, we're gonna have it uh, again in September and really working through the summer in partnership with all the different youth uh, and the high school groups, um, the National School Walkouts, March for Our Lives, everyone that is really looking to empower uh, the younger generation that has some of the lowest voter participation rates. But if they voted in, uh, in their actual numbers, uh, we could increase um, you know, not just voter participation in 2018, uh, what the electorate can look like in 2018 and beyond, but what are the issues that people are going to be uh, really running on and responsive to. And we believe that voting rights is at the core of the issues for progressives um, so that we can have a, a better agenda moving forward. So if anyone has, um, you know, any interest in partnering with us in any of those states, uh, come look me up. Uh, we're coordinating where we can at tables on the ground. Um, and, you know, we're really focused on the state legislative and state house races, uh, considering that that's where a lot of the voting rights are happening. So, thank you.